Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering hypophosphatemia. If you haven't seen hyperphosphatemia already, that's fine. You don't have to go in order, but just keep all of your fluid electrolytes together. So if you're watching hypophosphatemia after that, watch hyperphosphatemia. If you watch hyponatremia after that, watch hypernatremia and so on and so forth. All right, guys, before we get started, please go ahead, like this video now so that you don't forget, you know, you're going to love this video. This is going to be a very short video, very to the point. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Be sure to check those out. And also, almost daily, you guys can watch me covering different uh, nursing content and questions on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So let's get started, guys. Hypophosphatemia, that is a phosphorus level of less than 2.4. Remember, your normal range for phosphorus is 2.4 to 4.4. If it's less than 2.4, patient has hypophosphatemia. So let's take a look. Hypophosphatemia, that's a low serum phosphate. It results from decreased intestinal absorption, increased urine excretion, or from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid. So these are all the ways that the patient can lose that phosphate. It may not be getting absorbed in the GI tract the way it's supposed to. Patient may be getting rid of it too much through the urine, through urinary excretion or that chef, okay? So acute manifestations, what are those signs and symptoms of hypophosphatemia? It includes CNS depression, muscle weakness, pain, respiratory failure, and heart failure. Notice, guys, you kind of see opposite of hyperphosphatemia. Remember when the patient had hyperphosphatemia, they had those signs and symptoms of uh, hypocalcemia, um, right? Remember I told you about how calcium phosphorus have an inverse relationship? Well, same thing here. These signs and symptoms you kind of see of what? Hypercalcemia, right? Chronic hypophosphatemia alters bone metabolism resulting in rickets and malacia. Why? I, um, osteomalacia. I want you guys to think about this for a moment. One second, guys. One moment. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. So if you guys can recall, in the last video, when I was talking about hyperphosphatemia, I explained how uh, the uh, uh, phosphate, what it would do was pull um, calcium out of the bloodstream and that calcium had to go somewhere. So it would lodge in the bones, uh, tissues, things like that. Well, hypophosphatemia, not having enough of a phosphate, it has the opposite effect. Instead of pulling that calcium out of the blood, where do you think it's pulling calcium out of? The bones, right? And that's why you'll see the patient will have um, altered bone metabolism and we'll see patient will have things such as rickets and osteomalacia. That's very important to understand. Guys, if you get a question about hypophosphatemia, it's gonna only be on a couple things. This is gonna be one of them, make sure you know it. Managing mild phosphorus deficiency involves increasing oral intake of dairy products. Why? I just told you with hypophosphatemia, the calcium is being taken out of the bone. So we want the patient to get um, a higher intake of calcium. So this is great for them to get dairy products or phosphorus supplements, phosphate supplements. Symptomatic hypophosphatemia can be deadly, okay? It can be fatal and it usually admires, uh, admires, it usually requires IV administration of sodium phosphate or, here we go, potassium phosphate. Yep. Frequent monitoring is necessary during IV therapy. And that makes sense, guys. You know, anything we give intravenously, um, the absorption time is the shortest than let's say we gave something sub Q or sublingual or, or um, IM, right? It goes into the bloodstream and, uh, immediately. So you ha definitely have to monitor that patient frequently. One last thing I want to go over guys are um, the causes and the clinical manifestations for hypophosphatemia. Now on this side, that was on the last video when I went over hyperphosphatemia. Make sure you guys review this if you haven't done so already. But for this video, we're going to focus on hypophosphatemia. Let me make this a little bit larger for you. So um, some causes, I'm not gonna go over all of them, but 
and I don't know why I don't have this highlighted, but this one's important. Malnutrition or vitamin D deficiency. Remember, guys, you need vitamin D to absorb what? Calcium. And we know that calcium and phosphorus have a very close relationship, right? With hypophosphatemia, that calcium is being removed from the bone. So a cause can be the patient not having enough vitamin D because we know we need vitamin D for calcium absorption. Guys, do you see how it all connects? parental nutrition, chronic alcoholism. And by the way, chronic alcoholism, it doesn't only cause hypophosphatemia, it causes many um, uh, fluid electrolyte deficiencies. What else? Phosphate binding antacids. So that makes sense. If the patient's taking a whole lot of phosphate binding antacid, of course it can cause hypophosphatemia. Hyperparathyroidism. Remember, guys, the parathyroid glands, those four nodules that sit right there on that thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands are responsible for what? Calcium. To be more specific, calcium in the blood. So if a patient has hyperparathyroidism, they're going to have high calcium where? In the blood. Well, what does that have to do with phosphate? Because if all that calcium in the blood, where is it not? in the bones. What is hyperphosphatemia? It takes calcium out of the blood and into the bones. Do you see how it all connects? Let's go to signs and symptoms for hyperphosphatemia, um, hypophosphatemia, excuse me, hypophosphatemia. I keep talking too fast. Muscle weakness. So those signs that we see in hypercalcemia we see in hypophosphatemia. Remember um, in the other video when I was talking about hypophos, um, excuse me, I was talking about hyperphosphatemia and in hyperphosphatemia, patient has signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia. Now it's the opposite. Now that we're talking about hypophosphatemia, patient's gonna have signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia. So they're gonna have muscle weakness, respiratory muscle weakness, seizures, Osteomalacia, that's very important. Rickets, I don't know why I didn't highlight rickets, but rickets, they may experience some rhabdomyolysis, rhabdomyolysis, which is also a medical emergency. You suspect that patient has a rhabdo, you have to call a physician right away or the healthcare provider. But guys, this is your hypophosphatemia in a nutshell. Literally, what you need to know about hypophosphatemia right here, that's it. Let, please let me know what you guys thought about this video. Um, I have lots of fluid and electrolytes to go. Next video, I'll be covering magnesium, magnesium imbalance. So I'll be going over hyper and hypomagnesemia. Please let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video. If there's anything you'd like me to cover that I haven't done so already. If you haven't already liked this video, please do so now before the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. And you guys will catch me on the next video.